Nintendo has to be the most evil video game company around. Worse than EA and Ubisoft combined. They have weaponized our childhoods and use every chance they can get to remind us how much they hate us and don't even want us playing their games. They like to punch down on the little guys. From small YouTube channels to indie game publishers that are a fraction of a fraction of their size. They even bully around their own loyal fans for apparently no reason. I've never seen a more aggressive and anti-consumer business in my life quite like Nintendo. But the biggest reason they're so diabolically evil is because they hide behind the facade of a wholesome family-friendly entertainment company. <laughs> Let us begin. One of my favorite games of all time is The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. Even though Ocarina of Time was my first introduction to the series and is also one of my favorite games, my experience with Twilight Princess was so profound that it made me a lifelong fan of the series. This is not another one of those videos, but I'm pretty sure you know where this is going. The problem is when I want to revisit this game, the sole reason I bought a Nintendo Switch by the way was because I'm a Zelda fan. I either have to play it through emulation or track down some retro console and end up paying hundreds of dollars just to play one game. If this game was readily available on the eShop, I would happily pay $60 for it, but I can't. If the gaming industry is struggling so badly that you feel the need to have to raise the prices on your games, I mean, we've seen it with Tears of the Kingdom, and offer us subscription services to try to appeal to the widest audience possible in order to remain profitable, then answer me this. Why can't I buy your games and play them on your platform? If emulation is such a problem, which it isn't, then why not compete with that market? Obviously, there's people there that want to play your older games, so that's money you're leaving on the table. Like, a lot of money. At what point is this self-imposed? We've heard it all before. Piracy is a service issue. The people who are actually out there emulating Switch games right now are probably so insignificant that they don't even register on the scale. And even then, they probably already own the game and they just want to play it on their PCs at higher resolutions and frame rates. I personally emulate a lot of older games that I know I can play through Nintendo Switch Online. And my reason isn't just because I don't want to pay for it. I actually paid for the subscription for a while. My reason for still choosing emulation by other means is because Nintendo Switch emulation sucks. There's barely any options. The filters, there's like a few for each emulator. And the nail in the coffin is that I can't change those damn borders to black and get rid of that stupid logo in the top left corner of the screen. And the fact that they drip feed us games at such an excruciatingly slow pace, it just makes the entire service not worth it in my opinion. And you know what? Everything I've said up to this point could all be brushed aside if it wasn't for the fact that Nintendo doesn't just lazily disregard backwards compatibility because Sony and Xbox do too. And I'll admit Xbox is probably the best when it comes to backwards compatibility out of the big three. But no, it's the fact that they actively fight against games preservation. This is the same company that shut down their digital store with the 3DS making their games inaccessible to purchase and went on to take down the Citra emulator during the lawsuit against Yuzu. Do you know what scraps are left for the fans? An HD port of Luigi's Mansion 2 for $60 and soon to be the same thing with Donkey Kong Country Returns. You want to play a game like Kirby Planet Robobot? 
instead of being able to buy it directly from Nintendo themselves, you're probably buying a used 3DS that costs nearly as much as a Nintendo Switch OLED and going through the tedious process of hacking it like I did. Think of how cool it would be to be able to play 3DS games on Nintendo Switch. What if there was a feature where you could link together the Nintendo consoles? I'm just spitballing here, but the top screen could be the one Switch docked, and the bottom screen could be another Nintendo Switch in your hands. It's kind of like a Wii U, and we all own multiple Switches, so does it really matter? I don't know, I just think it's dumb that these companies whine about the gaming industry shrinking, yet they don't even have most of their catalog available for you to purchase. So there's this popular YouTube channel by the name of Retro Game Core. He reviews retro handheld systems and I watch a lot of his content. He's the one that convinced me to go out and buy Ambernick's new colorway for their RG35 blah 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 SP. And there's been this recent talk online about his channel possibly getting banned for showing Nintendo gameplay in some of his videos. This guy makes a living off of his YouTube channel, and I've seen him in his videos show proof that he owns the games he emulates. He literally dumps the cartridges himself. I believe it was a copyright strike on a video showing the MIG switch, I think it was. But it doesn't even matter. It's the fact that this guy is doing everything legally and by the book, but Nintendo wants to come and fire shots at his channel when he's never even condoned piracy in any way. I think it's crazy how so many people think that emulation is illegal. Because if that was the case, then playing on Nintendo's own subscription service would be illegal because that's technically emulation. It's so funny because honestly, I don't even know. I think you can actually get in trouble by showing gameplay footage of Nintendo games on actual Nintendo hardware. It's to the point where Nintendo YouTubers themselves are becoming cautious over what footage they use in their videos because they don't want to get copyright strikes. Literally, Nintendo's most devoted fans that promote their games constantly don't even know if they're safe making Nintendo content. People want to come after me for criticizing Nintendo and they want to cancel me out just for saying I don't care about the Nintendo Switch 2. I just think that there's better options out there, but a big reason why people don't want to support them anymore is because Nintendo treats their fans like absolute dog shit. I didn't start seeing how cutthroat Nintendo was until I noticed all the fan projects back in the day being killed off with cease and desist orders, silently shutting down smash tournaments, even the smallest shit like a fan remake of the first level in Super Mario 64, which was little more than a playable demo, fan remakes like Pokemon Uranium, and arguably the best fan remake ever made with another Metroid 2 remake, getting DMCA takedown notices, even though they were never meant to compete with Nintendo and were just passion projects by fans of their respective series. I've heard of this new roguelike game recently. It's a fan-made project that acts like a randomizer for A Link to the Past, where you descend through procedurally generated dungeons, and it honestly sounds cool as hell. I think it's called Dungeons of Infinity, and you would think that this would massively extend the replayability of this game and be a huge win for fans of the Legend of Zelda series, but nobody wants to show gameplay of it and promote it because they're afraid of getting copyright banned by Nintendo. I truly want to be excited for Nintendo Switch 2 and what's next for Zelda and Mario, and I'm still excited for Metroid Prime 4. I'd be lying if I said that I'm never going to purchase from Nintendo ever again. They are so deeply rooted into my childhood that it's like fucking Stockholm Syndrome for me every time they release a new Mario game. But damned if I don't feel bitter when it's my third time buying Donkey Kong Country Returns and then possibly getting copyright strikes on any one of my videos that show gameplay footage of that same game.
But it doesn't end there. Just when you think Nintendo couldn't get any worse, they turn around and show us what their true intentions were this entire time. This family-friendly company isn't just being overly protective helicopter parents of their precious properties. When you look at their recent legal actions being taken against Pal World, you can start to notice a pattern. It's the same pattern I've been watching unfold in the gaming industry for a while now. Nintendo's over here trying to run a monopoly. They're suing Pal World over these gameplay mechanic patents. And just think, how many games like Pokemon with monster catching mechanics have you seen become successful? I think I remember a game called Temtem. There's this small indie Metroidvania style game I can't remember. And uh, um, this game called Cassette Beast looked kind of cool, but those games never became successful. Not until Pal World came along and exploded into popularity. Even the most hardcore Pokemon fans will tell you that the games haven't been good since the 2D titles. They're so watered down and piss baby easy that they don't even take advantage of the battle mechanics anymore. The EXP share has been forced onto us making the games even easier. You can literally just mash the A button to get through the entire game. And Pokemon Scarlet and Violet? They're still unplayable games. I don't care what anybody says. Here's the thing though, where else are you going to play anything like a Pokemon game? There's literally nowhere else you can go. Until Pal World came along and tried to innovate on the Pokemon formula, and because Nintendo and the Pokemon company are so lazy that they don't want to be forced to make a good game because of this new possible competition, they're going to use their legal teams to try to push Pal World out of the market. That's literally what monopolies do. They stifle creativity and make it to where you have to keep buying their garbage because you literally have no other options. Now I'm sure the loyal Nintendo fans hopped in the comment section long before they made it this far into the video to let me know how wrong I am. How they've won the ninth generation by a landslide and consistently get quality games from Nintendo. People like me get lumped in with the raging incels and grifters simply by not sharing the popular opinion. Yeah, big surprise, there's people out there in this world that feel like Nintendo is a shit company. And if you're one of those people, well, I hope you stick around. I'm not gonna beg you to like or subscribe or anything like that, but I would like to hear your thoughts down in the comment section.